They say chasing rabbits will leave you with none, but what about chasing a volcano, three colourful lakes and a total solar eclipse? We're about to find out. This is the story of our slightly insane, undeniably ambitious attempt to conquer Mount Kilimitu in Ende, Indonesia. Or while the moon takes a bite at the sun, will we become sun-kissed adventurers or an eclipsed disaster story? You're going to have to watch this one and see. We're Mark and V, and this is our adventures. OK, well, we've come to um, Awarong for our first taste of goat satay and um, goat satu. That's a goat satay there. Uh, I've also got some chicken, because you know I'm a coward, and some chicken soup. But I'm have some goat satay, so let's have a look. And this is my first ever taste of goat. So watch my face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's really nice. Mm. That is so, so nice. Yes, I really like that. This is a meal for a king here, isn't it? It really is. It's loads. So there's the chicken soup. Look at that. That looks amazing. It's got like noodles in it and all sorts, so I'm just gonna try and keep that out in the food. So here we go. That's very good as well. No, I'm not gonna bore you, just letting you watch me eat it, so I'm gonna carry on now and eat this and enjoy it. I'll talk to you later on. Well, I've been totally beaten by that. I mean, it, it was far, far more than it looks. Um, that peanut satay was absolutely amazing. Honestly, it's best. I think it's the best peanut satay I've ever, sauce I've ever tasted. Um, the goat satay, I've never had it before, and that was amazing as well. So, um, absolutely, 100%. It's um, been a really good meal. Very filling. You know, it doesn't look very much, but it's very, very filling. Well, we're going to pay up now, and then we're going to head off to see a rice field. Um, and what else was it we're going to see? We're going to go and see a rice field and we're going to go and see a traditional village. Perfect. So um, that's where we're going to head off to next. Um, and I think we'll uh, enjoy seeing that as well. So we're now in Endy and we're um, on our way to Moni, but we're going to stop off at rice fields and a traditional village on the way. Um, I think I'm just going to film some bits and pieces as we're going along so you can get a general feel of what we're seeing and, you know, so you can witness it for yourself as well.
Wow. That is just bloody amazing. Look at that. This is on, on the road from Ende to Flores. I'm really not sure where we are, but it is just absolutely amazing scenery. It's really Jurassic. You can imagine I'm filming Jurassic Park here. Absolutely brilliant. Very carefully, you can just see a waterfall there. And depending on what to, almost dry yet. Yeah. In, in the rainy season, that will be a lot bigger. Um, we are coming out of the rainy season now, eh? even though we're here, rain hasn't followed us yet. Passing in the street. Really? Yes. That's amazing. Here is absolutely some amazing, well, story news, whatever you want to call it, breaking news. There are Komodos actually on Flores. You want to tell us a little bit more about it? Must be driving? Uh, the Komodo, now it, they, they are in the north part of Flores. We call it just around Rium, 17 Island. Sometimes the local people there, they catch the Komodo because the Komodo, they come and uh, eat their animals. Yes, okay. like a goat, cow and chicken okay. and also pigs. Right, okay. Yes. Yeah. We've always been led to believe that they're only on Rincha and, and uh, Komodo. And the color here is more bright. Okay. Compared to Komodo in uh, Komodo Island and Rinka. Okay. And here is smaller. Smaller? Oh, okay. Smaller and uh, more aggressive. Okay, yeah. yeah. Like uh, in Rinka and Komodo, they are big, but here smaller and mm -hmm. aggressive. That's really interesting. I'd have never known that. And, but I reckon there's lots of people who don't realize that as well. Yes, yes, yes. Do you have any monkey here? Oh, monkey. Now he's driving your car. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Joel, yeah. We have. Well, this is a stone right here by the Dutch when they built this road. There's a heavy Dutch influence here. That's a big, big boulder as well, isn't it? Look at that, people. That is absolutely beautiful. <laughs> I 
We've come out to see honeybees. And where are we looking? Yeah, so many. One, two, three, four, five. They're just on this tree. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you can see this at home. Um, I'm going to try and point. So you've got one there, one there, one there. I can see very easily. And you can see on the camera. And there's some more over there. Wow. That's pretty amazing. I wish I had a zoom on this now so I could go up a bit closer. Well, we're here in um, Santiago in Mone, Flores. This is quite a stunning little place, actually. Family owned. Um, we've turned up in the dark, so we can't really see a lot. But one thing I can show you is I can take you through to our room. So I'm just going to come into the room and show you the room. Uh, it's a lovely large bed. And as soon as we turned up, they supplied us with nice clean towels, little unit there, it's a wall charger. Very simple, very simple, but it's clean, very clean. Um, come through, and we got a little sink there. And when we come into the bathroom, try and find the light. That light is on. And uh, we've got a nice shower there, rain or shower, as well as a normal type of shower. And as we come round, it's your toilet. Little unit there. It's all really nice and neat and tidy. It's clean. I don't think you could ask for much more, really. Really, like, perfect. I'll get some bits and pieces on charge. Um, we're off early tomorrow. Um, 4.15 we've got to get up, so uh, we won't be staying up very late tonight. Well, good morning. It's 4.30 and we're in end day. And uh, we're going to go and see the sunrise. Um, we're being picked up, well I say 4.30, it's about 4.20. We're being picked up at 4.30. So we'll see you. We're going to drive up to watch the sunrise from the top. So we'll see you soon. Well, we're um, we're here now, and we're walking up the uh, the steps to the viewing point. Obviously, you can't see anything at the moment because. Uh, it's still very, very dark. You right there? Can you see the steps me? Yeah. Um, if you do come, I do advise to take a torch. You can see there, as we're walking. It'd be very hard if you didn't know it. Sadly, it's raining a little bit. A bit misty rain. But as the sun comes up, that could sort of all burn off. We're keeping our fingers crossed. Well, we're at the top of Kalamutu now. Um, hopefully the mist will clear enough for us to have a proper view. Um, I don't know what you can see on this at the moment. Um, I'm shining a torch on the sign in front of me, but I can't see a lot on the camera. So hopefully you will be able to see something. We'll film it when we come back down anyway. You can now see the lakes in front of us, although it's very dark it's, you, and the sun's still to, to rise yet. And we've got quite a lot of cloud cover. Um, but you can see one of the lakes just there, hopefully you can see my hand just there. You can see another one there. Hard climb. In fact, uh, you know, for anyone 
taking her time, it's really quite easy. On a scale of one to 10, maybe four. If you've ever climbed Batur, I put Batur at maybe, for me, that was about an eight, maybe a nine. Um, but obviously some of you do rock climbing and other things. So you look at me and say, nah, that's like a two. Wow. wow. Yeah, look at that. So we're right in the middle of it now. And hopefully when the light comes up more, you'll be able to see even better. Right, as it starts getting lighter, and it does get lighter really, really quickly, let's move over here and have a look at the lake. Look at that, guys. That is absolutely stunning. Now that was really worth coming up here for. Just need the sun to make an appearance now, don't we? How many times have we keep come up here? Depends. Depends. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But uh, when I was a uh, kid, like this, we used to come by work. Okay, all the time. Like every yeah. Sunday. Every Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> My dad uh, didn't bring the food. We just go to like a farm, any farm, and just pick some fruit, cassava, something like that. Something to eat, you know? Yeah, yeah, okay. fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that one. That one was uh, the first leg. We call it like a polo, as I told you. Yes. This special place for the bad spirit, like for the bad people. That's for the bad people. Yes, go. that's uh, what uh, we believe here, for especially for the Leonis. And then this one, we call it Kofai Nuvamuri. It is a special place for the young people. Oh, I see, so if young people tell me this one. Yes, yes, they will uh, stay here. And then the last one, the other one, it is special for the old people. I see, that. Yes. so the young stay here, the old ones stay there. Yeah. Before they take the gate, they will enter the gate. The gate that you showed us. Yeah. And we'll show you that gate when we cool back down because obviously we couldn't see it in the dark or the camera couldn't see it. Yeah, really, really intelligent. Yeah, well, we might be going to witness someone diving down to have a look at the lake a bit closer. I mean, they don't put railings there for a reason, do they? Um, look at that. We've heard so many stories recently of um, people falling off cliffs and that in and around Bali. Um, and it's slippery. Um, yeah, you can't tell me they really know what they're doing and standing. You know, somebody will stand on a loose bit of earth and they've gone. You know, so um, and that ruins it for everybody. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the um, dormant. I like it now. And uh, as you heard just now, that this is where the older, the, the older people who die, and um, this is where their spirit resides afterwards in the afterlife. So all the old people reside in this lake. And behind us, the two lakes, um, the bigger one is where the young people who die, and um, that's where their spirits go. And the one in behind is where all the bad spirits um, remain. So um, it's a, a proper spiritual belief here. Uh, it's mixed with um, Catholicism, I think that's a word. Um, um, so they, they mix their own traditions with um, the Catholic sort of faith, um, and they got a mixture of the two.
just for a little bit of information, we're actually 1,640 meters above sea level here. What do you think? Oh look, there's a monkey, guys, monkey. Well, every minute it changes up here. The mist rolls in, and then it all changes, and then you can see the lake's much clearer now. Look. Sadly, I don't think we're going to see a sunrise. It's the reason we came up here for well, that and the eclipse. We're going to have to change our plans, I think. But you've got to agree. It was definitely worth the climb to come up here and see this, wasn't it? <laughs> it's now starting to get quite chilly. The wind seems to have picked up a little bit and there's a very heavy drizzle in the air. But I would suggest if you're coming here, try and make the effort to come in the dry season. I think your experience would be far better. Today it's going to be a partial solar eclipse as well, um, about 70, maybe 80% solar eclipse. We were hoping to watch it up here, but that's not going to happen now. So we have been talking to Eras, and we think we're going to head to a beach he knows. He thinks it'll be a good place to watch it down there, and we may get away from the mountain cloud. So you can see the, the sky is trying to clear. I don't think it's... You know, Looking at the mist and that coming in, I don't think we're going to get it, but as we come round, it's just beautiful, isn't it, guys? You know, there's loads, I'm showing loads of it, but, um, you know, I can't get enough of that. That's the reason we came up. Shame it's raining. It is a shame it's raining. And, uh, look at me, Every, everybody else is in, like, waterproof, so I can boots and all the rest of it. There's me, like, flip-flops, shorts. Thin shark. So, please, for offering. Ah, okay. Right. So, normally, every uh, once a year, we do offering for our ancestor. So they will uh, sacrifice the pig, and then all the meat, the heart, will cook, and then they will offer there. Yeah, that's what you say, but yesterday you not yeah. eat it, you offer. Yeah, 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 yeah. In that area also, after they offer it, people, all the chief, they will dancing. Uh, they will do the traditional dancing of Leonis. Yeah. We call it Gawi dancing. Gawi, Gawi. Yes. So after that, just go back. Yeah. Okay. All the ceremonies. They do the dance in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's like a sandra. Yeah. 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 Because around Kelimutu Lake, around this lake, there are around 14 chief. Okay. Yes. Right, okay. So as we come back down, there's this little viewing platform to the left hand side as we come up through. So uh, we're going to walk up the viewing platform and I believe that we get to see the second lake clearer. Right, this is probably one of the most <laughs> stunning views there is. Remove that fork and get your hands on it. Oh my! Look at that, guys. That is just immense. I think you've got to agree. Shame the sun's not out, but I think the mist almost gives it an atmospheric sort of feel. I really do. It's 
especially for the Leonis. So this is like a traditional dancing and someone the man he flute flute yes yeah. yeah and this one is like a violin yes yeah this is both of them they just watching and this man is playing like a drum yes we call it uh, mm, wani in traditional language and this one we call it gong, gong. yes yeah. this is the traditional house area so the chief he live here and all is like the family with him and this is the circle normally we use for dancing the traditional dancing we call it uh, gawi okay. and this is this this area it's only for the chief can standing there it's a secret okay. place and this one they make the traditional clothes we call it sarung special for women for the women it's more colorful and for the men we only have like a more is black this is all the chief they they do offering to our ancestor so it's like this one it's like a glass it is a moke this one is made from the outside of coconut you know okay yes, yeah yes. i don't know yeah and this is like a betel nut this is the meat and the rice this is when we make the ceremony normally we cook rice with bamboo so we put uh, rice inside the bamboo and then we just make fire here and then just put the rice here bamboo and also sometimes we can put the like a chicken or all the meat inside the bamboo and then we cook and then after that we will eat together share with all the family <coughs> this one when we make ceremony normally we sacrifice the buffalo this one and this is all the all the things that we get from our farm so okay. after we harvest all the things normally we do the ceremony it's like a thanks and giving ceremony yes Well, we're um, back down. There's a smell of durian fruit in the air. Um, I haven't done any actually. What we're looking at here is, um, I believe this is the. This is a gate to the afterlife, um, which leads to the free lengths. That big stone there. So that, what we're looking at there, that big stone, that's the gate to the afterlife. As we're coming down off the mountain, mist is getting worse. Hopefully it's going to clear at some stage. Might be lucky, might we? Who knows?
we're actually looking at a cinnamon tree there. So on the way to the beach, we've decided to stop at Wologia Traditional Village. And as you can see, if you have a look, we're in a traditional sarong. We were charged 35,000 per person to come in. There were 18 houses, but in 2012, there was a massive fire and they burnt down. They've rebuilt 14 of them, and the last four are yet to be built. This is a special place for normally people. They learn how to do dancing here before they enter to the place and go dance. Okay. Yes. And then at, at the, upstairs, they will dance together with all the chief, all, all the people will dance together until in the morning. Okay. Yes. Oh. The roof in that Aries is showing us is made from palm fiber. Namanya masing-masing. Ya, dibentuknya sama semua tidak beda, tiang batu all is the all the wood is they get from the forest and for the roof they use palm fiber but the other is uh, different this one is different different kind of uh, roof and there is one stone up there okay so it is to the gut Okay. Yeah. Homage to the God. Yes. Okay. Okay. Because it is a secret place. So that's that stone, it is in the middle that as I told you before, it is uh, for the chief. Okay, yes. And is this man the chief? Yes. He yeah. is he is also the chief. He is also the all, chief. All, yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. We call it Mosalaki. Mosalaki. Mosalaki it is the name, a special core for, for the chief, yeah. The raised structures in the middle that we're looking at now are actually the graves of their ancestors. And you will notice with the Leoness people, they tend to keep their dead very close. They keep them in their family compounds. Even in modern homes as well, we've noticed that they're there. This is all, it's a grave. And this is all, this is a, that small house. It is special for the boats. Okay. So when someone dies, so they yeah, they dig the grave, take the bone and they put, leave it there. In in these boxes here. Yeah, in this. Box. Oh, in this house. Yeah. Okay. It's something uh, almost the same like a macadamia. Okay. Ah, yeah. yeah. Looks almost like stones, doesn't it? It's just like stones. Uh, the, the, the cell outside is very yeah. strong, you know? Yeah. So they have to dry them first, and then after that, they will smash it yeah. to get the good side. Mm -hmm. yeah.
looking right out to the ocean right there now. You can just see it. And we're just on this road coming down from Moni and we're heading towards the coast now but look at this view straight out to sea we're told that the beach we're going to is one of the best beaches in Flores obviously that's down to um, personal sort of uh, views and it's you know obviously it's going to be because it's the one we're going to but um, I really do hope so Okay. Only in the raining season. Oh, oh I see. So this rice they use for ceremony. Ah, yeah. ceremony. The rice, the yeah. the thanks and giving ceremony. Right. So after they they harvest this rice, they will do the ceremony. I see. Yeah. Ah. And this this kind of rice is uh, sugarless. Oh, it's very good. Okay. Yeah. And we've just stopped along the way as we're driving along. And this is typical of everywhere we've been. They sell the wares along the side of the road. There's kendal nuts there. Then you've got these cloves. And it's all just drying in the road. And a little bit further down, as we walk down, they had chilies. And as you can hear, the dogs really didn't like us. They were quite aggressive. And just look at this view. Again, an absolute stunning view. I'm re really, really loving Flores. We go a little bit deeper into it and it's, you know, we're going to have to come back here. Definitely going to have to come back. <laughs> and that's chocolate. <laughs> All dried at the side of the road. Hi. <laughs> it's a lovely thing. Hello. <laughs> now I am going to shine the camera up there and you can see that the moon is just moving across the sky. The moon is just moving across the sun. So we're on about, I would say. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Oh yeah, soon we'll uh, yeah. all dark, In huh? an hour. Yeah. yeah. That's just covering over with cloud again, so we've been really lucky to see that. we got about another hour to go before um, total eclipse, and I believe we're 80, about 85%, 87% total eclipse on wow. this island. Okay. Just come down a little bit further, and I really, really, really don't know what this is oh, going to look like. through the visor. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's perfectly. Sunglasses and that. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing, isn't it? So I really don't know how good it is going to be seen. Oh wow! I'm just going to bring us into these picture. Um, I'm just going to come in close up as we can because if it's not coming out any other way, you can at least see it on V's picture. That's what we're seeing live at the moment. I'm trying to do a little bit of video on my phone. Yes, if you could please, V. Yeah. Just probably buying the globe now. Well, we're now um, 
chasing to a point where we can find, you know, a good position to watch the eclipse. Hopefully, we'll be down by the beach. We were initially going to watch it on top of the volcano, but with the cloud cover up there, we knew it was going to be impossible. So we're probably 25 minutes from the beach now, and the eclipse is, um, is probably 30 minutes away. Yes. So uh, it's going to be a close call, but we will see it or see something of it. Well, currently the um, cloud is coming back over again, but there's a um, definite dusk sort of feeling starting to happen. Um, well, as we head down to the beach, um, trying to learn a little bit of Indonesian, and it's Grahana Matahari is Eclipse of the Sun. So, um, obviously, it, Obviously, a lot of people don't know um, anything about it here, so um, our, our, our driver's trying to um, let people know as we're going through so they don't get scared. So as we come down the beach... Um, and this is cacao. Cacao, but... Lots of it. The chocolate. Cacao, yeah. Yeah. Hey. Oh. Enjoy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Enjoy Right, so look at this. Um, sometimes you have to just put your faith in people. And when he told me this was the most beautiful beach in Flores, this is what he's brought us to. And of course, we've got the um, eclipse happening as well. So we've gone into this sort of state of like dusk. I don't know what to call it. No, I can't really work out where the sun is at the moment. First thing I've got to say is there are no tourists here. Absolutely none. None at all. Um, do I even tell you where this is? Now, this is a dilemma now, isn't it? I have found something. And I'm not sure if I'm going to tell you. I'm going to think about it. Tan a lot in Flores. This is truly amazing. Now, you can all tell me you've been to the best beach in the world. And we've been to a few. But this is truly stunning. I don't know what else I can say about it. Eclipse. Well, we did manage to see the solar eclipse. But unfortunately, it didn't really come out on video at all. It didn't look very good at all, it just looks cloud. However, V managed to get two really good photos, I think. We'll just have to settle with that. The experience was amazing. Okay, so we've um, decided to have some food here and um, we're gonna have fish. I'm, I'm not big on fish. However, I do like tuna. And um, I'm gonna have, I've got some tuna here. I got tuna with rice, fish soup, and these have in. Is it is it faux now? Is it? <laughs> and 
These got some green stuff. I don't know what that is. Spinach. Spinach. So I certainly won't be having that, any of that because um, anybody who knows me knows I really don't like it. So I'm gonna have a taste of the. Um, gonna have a taste of this. Uh, lots of sambo. I have flour. Delicious. So tuna, the sambo. Gotta have sambo sauce. We we have like the other one that uh, you can get the food, but the other one you can only get the food. And that's, ooh, my sample's good. Yeah. That really is strong. That is really strong. That's really nice. I like that. So these just offloaded a sample on me. That's making me hiccup already, so it's strong. That's good. So I'm gonna have some fish soup in between. This is good for malaria. Excuse me. Yeah. Nice and fish soup. Yeah, And that's really good as well. That's really good. <laughs> Sorry for the hiccups, but um, the sambal's really. If I have anything hot, really hot, makes me feel. <laughs> And uh, it's not because I'm beaten, it's because it just ma makes me hiccup. <laughs> and on a hiccup rating of one to 10, that's on about an eight, I think. Anyway, I'm gonna enjoy this now, I'll see you afterwards. Well, we've had an absolutely wonderful time here. Um, days just slid by. We're here, it's Saturday now, and it's, uh, I'm just gonna check my phone. It's half past three already. How does it happen? We went in, had a little swim, I flown the drone, and we've just chilled on the beach and had fun. And I've got to say, this man here has totally changed our day. If you're coming, if you are coming to Flores, you need to look him up. And his details will be below because he is number one, aren't you? He is the man. Best guide, best guide in Flores. He is the man. Um, seriously, seriously speaking, though, he is. Um, one of the few people we've met in Indonesia, first time, that you feel entirely comfortable with. And that goes a long way, for me personally, and I think for MV, we've, we've done a lot of meeting different people, offering different services, different drivers, different tours, all the rest of it. And sometimes, you know, what you see on the tin is not what you actually get inside. And this time, it's actually been more. Um, the whole relationship, it, I would say it's a friendship now. Not, not a relationship, it's a friendship. It's not a business transaction. Not a business transaction, it is an actual friendship. And we will continue to use them in the future. Hi. Hello, let's come to Flores. It's my beautiful island, you should come. And spend who are, your time. Tell me who you are. My name is Aris. I'm a local guide here, I'm from Moni. It's just very close to Kelimutu Three Colors Lake. It is a paradise. Thank you. Well, there's a water spout that kicks off up there, so I'm just going to keep on filming in this direction. And hopefully, we're going to get it on photo as well. It'll probably be V's photo you see because she always seems to get a far better photo than me. Well, oh, I don't know if I got that, but V is cheering because she just got it. Hang on a minute, is it a game? <laughs> Nothing, that's going be it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, a little one. Next one. Next one? Yeah, I Everybody's up there watching, waiting for this big swell to come in again. So we're just gonna, there's lots of people on the beach as well. So uh, this is obviously a phenomenon that happens. Phenomenon. Do, 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 do. Phenomenon. Do, 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 do. Phenomenon. Oh, didn't come in at that time, did it? <laughs> that was a waste of time doing that. <laughs> oh, I promise you I will get better, I promise. But seriously, what do you think of it? Do you like it here? I'm still not going to tell you where it is because um, I've been asked not to. The locals have said, please don't tell people. 
if you want to come here, you saw our driver earlier, Aris, and uh, what a nice chap he is. And um, if you want to find this beach, he will drive you here, and then you will be asked to keep the secret as well. So, yeah, it's nice to see things that, like you. Know, you can still discover things which you can't just drive to. Some of you may know where the beach is and want to desperately post it below and say where it is. But, do you know what? It's nice finding somewhere that nobody seems to really know where it is. It took us probably two hours, maybe a bit more to get here from uh, Moni. You can get your compass out and work it out on Google Maps if you want to try. Those are pretty clever, probably know it already now. Well, that wave ain't coming in, is it? So we'll, we'll leave it there. We're about to head off now. And say goodbye to this lovely, beautiful beach. And like I said, the only way you're gonna find it is if you contact Aris. He will actually drive you here, but he won't tell you where he's taking you. Well, thanks for watching guys, and don't you think that beach was just absolutely beautiful? Well, I did. I loved it there. Anyway, thanks for watching. In the next video, we go back to Le Bois Bajo, and this is where the trip takes a bit of a nosedive, and a chap tries to rip us off for a large amount of money. Anyway, Aries come to our rescue. So you need to watch that just to know who this guy was. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. See you in the next video. Look after yourselves. Bye.